Hey, VCers, it's Matt again. I'm back with another review. It's been a while. Continuing my uh, chronological order review of the Kinks albums. And today finds us in 1975 with the Kinks Presents Schoolboys in Disgrace. So there's the front cover, which is uh, just a god awful cover there. It's, uh, can you say pedo? I don't know. That's a, it's a terrible cover. Here's the back cover, which is a lot better. They should have used this for the front cover, I think. They should have whoever thought this up vetoed this and come up with something else but anyway so schoolboys in disgrace from 1975 which is uh wouldn't you know it yet another rock opera concept thing but things are starting to look up a little bit here last time reviewed was uh soap opera the album that came out before this which i didn't expect to like and liked quite a bit it had a kind of a silly story, but it was a fun story. It was a Prince and Popper type story. This one is, uh, although it's a rock opera, it's not as jumbled up and and convoluted and boring as, as the uh, rock operas of all those albums between Lola up to this point. It's a pretty simple, straightforward story. The uh, schoolboy is, uh, he's kind of the bad kid in school that always in trouble, always in the principal's office. I guess they call it the headmaster's office in, in England over there and playing tricks on the teachers and bullying the other kids and stuff and in trouble and, and uh, he gets enticed by one of the naughty school girls, gets the girl in trouble which I assume means pregnant and so he gets his come up and sir gets in trouble at school even though it really doesn't follow because if you're following the story of this album, he sticks around through graduation and gets to graduate, so I don't know exactly how much of a comeuppance he gets, but, uh, and it's also sort of a indictment of the oppressiveness of the British school system in those days. I don't know, maybe the school system's still like that over there, but at least the school system as it was back in Ray and Dave's days, which um, you get a little bit of that in Pink Floyd's The Wall and some other, some other records by... Uh, British bands, so it's um, not the most exciting story, but it's at least pretty simple if you want to follow it. And it, the the other plus on here is unlike these other concept rock opera albums that they had done in the 70s, this one actually has the songs. This has some really good songs on here. Um, a lot of those albums, the Lola or Lola's a good album, but I mean. Muswell Hillbillies through low budget. Uh, they're just not very good albums, and and they have their moments, but even those aren't stellar, and they're not very memorable. I was listening to this. I had never heard this album with the exception of one song before I bought it, and I bought this album a month or so ago because I wanted to just keep on going with these reviews and not stop at Lola and pick up at low budget. So a lot of these albums are new to me, but like I said in some other reviews, I have been listening. They're new to me, but I've been giving them a fair shake. So I've been playing them over a week or two weeks' time, several times, so that I get familiar with them and I'm not just giving it one or two listens and coming on and saying it's good or bad. But the thing about this album is I played it quite a bit, and which none of these other albums from the 70s period have done for me as it work few days ago I was driving around in my car going somewhere and started kind of humming you know da, 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 da. and I was like what am I humming and then it hit me that I'm humming one of the songs off of this so and a couple of the songs actually stuck in my head which none of them did with the exception of maybe Ducks on the Wall from Soap Opera and a couple of songs I already knew from those earlier albums but um, nothing really stuck in my head even though some of those songs are like I said those albums have their moments but they're not that good and I kind of got the feeling that Ray Davies had a little bit of a revival with this album, maybe. The uh, five or so albums that came before this, it's, it's it sounds like none of them are really necessary, even though they have their moments. If they didn't exist, it would be no, no great loss. But I think that Ray, kind of like George Harrison in the 70s, maybe, just... He was a rock and roll star, so he didn't know what else to do, so he just kept on making records, but his heart wasn't really into it. He was just sort of going through the motions and the band doing the same thing. They seemed to kind of be having some fun for the first time in years on this album. 
And uh, so, yeah, it's, um, it is what, another dreaded rock opera concept album, but it's, it's not so bad because the story is pretty simple and straightforward, even though it's no great shakes, but it's, uh, you can follow the story if you want, or you can just ignore the story and enjoy the songs. It's, uh, this is in no way, shape, or form even in the same universe as Arthur, but that's an album like that where you've got a great story and you've got a great album, probably the best album in 1969 and one of the greatest albums of all time. And you can just enjoy the songs or you can follow the story or you can do both. You can kind of do this with this too, even though this is no patch on Arthur whatsoever, but it's still a really good album. So, um, let's see. Uh, we start off with School Days, which is a good opener and a pretty good song. And it's the... Um, the um, the kid, the uh, he doesn't really have a name. Well, he does, and I'll get to that in a minute. But the the naughty schoolboy or the bad schoolboy. Uh, this a lot of this is takes place at the time when he's a kid in school, and some of these songs, if you follow in the story, take place when he's an adult and he's looking back on his years at school. So, School Days is kind of one of those looking back songs where he's thinking about how when they were kids and they were in school, they thought it was a bore and a big drag, but now looking back on it, he realizes that, you know, his friends and running around and those were the best days of his life, but now he's grown up and old and you can't go back, unfortunately, and so sort of that sentiment. And it's a good song on top of that, besides just having pretty good lyrics and all. Second song up, first time I heard it, I liked it. It was a lot of fun. Second, third time I heard it, I was kind of like, this is kind of one of those gimmicky songs that is good for a time or two, but then it's kind of annoying or silly but having listened to this album several times so it's kind of grown on me it's a song called Jack the Idiot Dunce which is uh you know we've all had those kids in school that we remember the just the awkward goofy kid that didn't fit in or just sort of the dumb stupid kid in this instance Jack the Idiot Dunce grows up to be a famous rock and roll star so I don't know if that's Ray singing in first person that he didn't fit in as a kid but then he grew up became famous you know member of the kinks so but it's a it's a pretty good song it's not as good as school days but it's just it's still pretty good and so you got a good one-two punch to start off the album and for the first time in years you know you start a kinks album and it's not sort of a dreary affair with a few highlights it's it's a pretty good start off and then you hit song number three which is a song called education and the momentum just to a stop because this song is 45 minutes long or at least it feels like it's 45 minutes long but it is a pretty long song it's uh, that's another thing that's a plus on these albums these these songs mainly they're they're two three four minute punchy songs and straight to the point they don't have the long songs that they had on those earlier um, that just meander on forever on some of those earlier kinks albums of the 70s but education is the exception to the rule here and this song is I don't have the records over on the record player but I know it lasts a good six seven minutes which is about five or six minutes too long and playing it over and over it kind of has grown on me in the last week but it's still not a very good song but it's basically everybody needs education and it's just got sort of silly lyrics oh let me show you this while this is the inner sleeve which is, uh, don't know if you can see it, but like notebook paper or a bind paper in a binder in your school book, and there are the lyrics, same thing on the back side. So, um, you know, we all need education, and even Aborigines need education. This is kind of stupid lyrics. Um, but the song goes on way too long and just kills the momentum of the first side. Fortunately, the last song, there's only four songs on side one the first time we fall the first time we fall in love which is where the schoolboy guy meets the naughty schoolgirl and falls in love with her I guess but it's kind of a 50s doo-wop sounding song pretty good thing and it's uh, how love is sublime and and uh, awful at the same time and I can attest to that but uh, anyway, so that's a good song. That's where he meets the girl. So side two, we go, starts off with I'm in Disgrace, one of the, uh, one of the 
album's better songs, really good, good song. If you're following the story, that's where the guy and the girl get in trouble or the girl gets pregnant or just says they get in trouble, but I would, whatever, they get caught, you know, something, and they get in trouble. But I'm in disgrace, really good song. Headmaster is where the boy has to go before the headmaster when he's got caught and kind of saying, you know, begging for leniency or something. It's not a great song, but it's a pretty good song. And then, best song on the album, and kind of has me jumping for joy, the one that I had heard before I heard this album, because it is on their 1980 live album, which we'll be getting to a few reviews down the road. But uh, And the power chord is back, which is great. I mean, the power chord of the great Kinks classics of the 60s, you really got me all day and all of the night, I need you till the end of the day. It's not quite the classic those songs were, but it is a pretty pretty darn good song. And uh, it's probably my favorite kink song of this period, this uh, 71, this up to low budget came out in 79. So all that stuff in between the hard way would definitely be my favorite kink song of that era. And it sounds like it could have fit on one of their 60s albums. And even better yet, 1975, that being sort of the rumblings of the beginnings of punk rock and new wave with the Clash and the Sex Pistols and the Ramones and the Jam and all that stuff coming on. Sounds like it could have been on, you know, Sex Pistols were one of the Jam's first albums. And as a matter of fact, even though they weren't really punk, but the, uh, the Kinks, The Knack, My Sharona fame, they covered the hard way on their first or second album. I used to have their two albums. I don't anymore, so I don't remember which one. It's on the first album or it's on the second album called Let the Little Girls Understand. So they covered the hard way. Um, then anyway, and of course around the same time this would help, uh, not 1975 really, but 75 to 80 period, you would have Van Halen and The Pretenders and The Knack and David Bowie and some other people covering some old Kinks classics. Not that Hard Way wasn't a hit, so it wasn't really a Kinks classic per se like the 60s songs, but, and that kind of helped bring them back to prominence that they would uh, come to. But anyway, The Hard Way, great song, their best song from this period. The Last Assembly is sort of the kid in the last day of school, and all of a sudden he's beginning to realize, you know, that this is going away, and even though he really didn't like school, he realizes that there were good things about it, that he's going to miss the friends and the some of the fun and stuff. No More Looking Back sort of plays into the same theme. He's he's out of school now and he's an adult and he's sort of thinking about school but realizing or his younger days, not school so much, just his younger days, but realizes he's growing up and he can't go back to those days. And so, and then they have a song called The Finale, which is a reprise of one of the songs on the album. Would have been great if they would have done a little snippet of The Hard Way to ride out the album with would have been a perfect ending. Instead, they picked the worst song on the album, Education. Mercifully, it's a short snippet. It's not a six minute thing. It's just a minute or so, but it's just education, education. We all need education, education. It's stupid. So, uh, bad album, bad ending to, to the album, but a good album overall. So, um, like I said, when the 70s, they were kind of drifting, in my opinion, just going through the motions, making albums just because what was their alternative to go out and get a real job or something, I guess, and they had made these great records in the 60s. Uh, so the 60s, the Kinks are the best band ever, with the exception of the Beatles. They never returned to those heights, but we're getting close to that period from low budget through word of mouth where they return to prominence and they return to being really good and they actually get really popular again with MTV and radio play and kids liked them. I mean, I was 16 in 1980, 16 and I was 17 in September of 80, but uh, so I mean, I remember going to concerts, I saw them three times in the 80s and they were a really big band among younger people, but they're not quite there yet and this isn't quite as good, not as good as any of their 60s stuff, it's not quite as good as their 80s albums, their early 80s albums, but it's getting there and it's pretty close and I was surprised. I knew going in the hard way and I knew that was a good song. I didn't know what else to expect and I wasn't expecting much. It's a pretty good album and so scale of 1 to 10, stupid cover aside, I will give this a 7 and say check it out and this and Soap Opera would be their two best of that uh, Muswell Hillbillies through Low Burn 
Lola through low budget 70s era I guess I've still got uh, two two albums between now and low budget to review and I bought one of those at Doc's Records yesterday I haven't listened to it yet I've, I think I've heard one or two songs off of it somewhere back there but so we got two albums to go we'll see if those are better than this or if they slide back a little bit there's actually three albums between this and low budget because this came out in 75 in 1976 there's an album called the kinks greatest celluloid heroes which is a greatest hits album of their RCA records period which is a total misnomer because none of the songs of RCA period were hits really and none of them were that great with well I guess the hard way was but and Ducks on the Wall, but <clears throat> so that's the greatest hits album. I don't have that one. I will probably pick it up someday just to complete my Kinks collection and have it, even though it's probably not a very good album. And so, yeah, and then you got two albums coming up before Low Budget other than that one. So, yeah, seven, I think, is what I just said on this. Pretty good album, and if you're going to buy any of their RCA period or their 70s period, with the exception of Low Budget, this one would be probably the one to get. It's the most uh, tuneful and catchy and sounds like they're actually having fun for the first time, at least since uh, Lola. So check this one out. It's a pretty good one. And we will see you all. I was going to do another review of a, not a Kinks album, but another album. I'll probably do that tomorrow. But uh, I might do another video that's unrelated to reviews tonight. I hope everyone has a good Sorry to have you guys staring at some guy's butt there. Let's put the kinks up instead. Have a good Sunday, everyone.